Give up again for no more time, ladies and gentlemen. Ghetto Zoopily Zoo, that's what I... That's, Wait, but I worked on that for like two minutes. Like, I was in the back like, oh, I'm going to sing this shit. I'm going to sing this shit. And then I was like, careful with my life and shit. I was like, okay, we're cool enough. I can say it. Super, super, super. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? <laughs> I turned myself off. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your next comedian, your headliner? Put your hands in there. Make some more noise for your next comedian, your headliner. Please. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Chicago, again, eight, nine, ten, eight faces. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Leibovitz. Oh, yeah. Thank you. For me to fucking headline this show? Are you getting familiar? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you guys, I headline a lot of bars. I'm not gonna lie. I headline a lot of bars. They got a different word for it. They call it refusing to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, sir, you gotta get out of here. I'm like, but I'm headlining. Like, no, we're gonna call the cops. <laughs> Punk ass feature in it, you know what I mean? Alright. Uh, give it up for everyone you've seen so far. This is pretty great show. You look like the dude from the Desperado. Yeah. That's pretty awesome that you were telling someone else that they look like a murderer. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they do both look like murderers, but like very different kinds of murderers. Like, if you need a hit done, you call this guy, right? <laughs> this guy's just like fucking eating the bodies like, I'm trying to make the voices stop. Make the voices stop. <laughs> Serial killer. <laughs> cereal eats a lot of cereal. All right, come on, get out of here. Fuck, you got some lucky charms, so fucking kill it. All right, okay. So you guys probably heard I had some jokes. Nah. I know, no, I like the audience to be terrified. <laughs> I just want you to be afraid of, of me. Um... This is cool. You guys are cool. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here for sitting around here. Okay, all right. Well, I get that one sometimes. I get that one sometimes. I do. I, I, I get actually. I get people coming up to me telling me what they think I look like all the time, which is pretty weird because I, I didn't fucking ask. Do you know what I mean? I didn't ask. But I get it all the time. So I get that one. I got that one. Hey, you know what? I get different shit. I'm never sure what impression I give off when I come up here. I think it's a generational thing. Okay. So I think like people my own age, they'll take a look at me coming up on stage, and I can tell they're looking at me, they're just like, all right. I guess we're going to see Wario for stand-up comedy. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. He's still going to win, I guess. How much is this free show? Okay, all right, cool. But then the older crowds, see, the older crowds are a little bit different. The older crowds have a different approach. Like, I was doing this show last week at a fucking, what do you call it? Not a retirement home, but a, um, a casino. I'm sorry, I was getting this <laughs> So they're a little older, right? So, so they see, see me up here. They're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, check out the '70s porn star. You know, it's fucking, it was cool. After the show, actually, one of these, one of these cougars. <laughs> she came up to me. She said I looked like Ron Jeremy, right? She took me back to her place. Let me tell you guys, <laughs> she was disappointed. <laughs> I felt like I won that one. You know? <laughs> With the dick. <laughs> That's how I like to win things. That's the victory stick. Okay. Uh, I don't know why though. Like I, I get people coming up to me on the street, strangers stopping me. They want to tell me what they think I look like, and I get all this different stuff. Like, I get all different kinds of things. Like they can't ever tell you like seventies porn star, but they like, I get seventies cop, I get seventies drug dealer. It's a really broad fucking. <laughs> They're clear on the decade. Like that's what I. Have. I actually ran into a friend of mine I hadn't seen in a long time, and he goes, uh, Hey man, don't take this the wrong way, but every time I see you, you look more and more like the entire cast of Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll take it this up back to the show. 
And then people always tell me I gotta look. Hey man, you gotta look. You should be on TV. I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Oh, I should just be on TV. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Why, why am I getting high with you in the basement when I could just be on TV? <laughs> My one buddy, he goes, he goes, uh, man, you should play every stoner slacker in every pizza commercial ever, man. I was like, all right, I'm down. Why don't you tell my agent, right? <laughs> my agent, that's what I named my bong. Uh, it's a pretty sweet arrangement. I give him 10% of everything I make, and uh, he blows smoke up my ass. So that's, uh, I don't know how you guys are taking bong hits, but you gotta fucking... You gotta... If you ain't taking anal rips, you ain't been high. <laughs> People are weird, man. People are so weird. I feel like, you know what I feel like? Everyone, like, they're all, everyone's all up in their own head. They got all this stuff going on. Everyone thinks everyone else is out to get them. You know what I mean? Right? Like, here's a perfect example. I'm, I'm the coffee shop earlier today, right? I'm standing by the door, not looking creepy at all, right? And, uh, <laughs> And so this young lady comes into the bar, or to the, to the coffee shop, and she's taking off her coat, and as she takes her coat off, a button pops off, and it falls on the floor. Right, so I bend down, and I grab it. As I'm standing back up, this woman says to me, she goes, uh, excuse me, can I have that back? Right, like, I want to know what she thinks I'm doing, right? She thinks I'm just going to be like, oh, finders keepers. Sorry, this one's going in the collection. Right, like, she was looking at me like, Standing there all day, just fucking waiting, right? like a pervert with a button fetish. Right? It's like, oh, finally, and that's from a pink coat. Oh. It was stupid. It was that moment today. I knew it. Chivalry is dead. So what I did, I took the button, I put it in my mouth, and I swallowed it. I fucking ran away. Right? Now I have a tummy ache, but that's all right because I'm gonna poop buttons later. Well. well. Get some, get some buttons, girl. Uh, I don't know, man. People are weird. Though. People just want to judge you, right? They see what you look like. They want to put you in some box. Like, it's bullshit. It's got nothing to do with who you are on the inside, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I could not have gone out without that. <laughs> It is bullshit though, it's got nothing to do with the real you. Because the box that they put you in will change when you change the way you look. Like for example, I used to have this big bushy beard. Okay, different look. And I'll never forget, I went to go work this comedy club in Milwaukee, I had the big beard, right? And as soon as I walk in, the booker, like the owner of the place, takes one look at me and goes, Hey, Cat Stevens, go shave that face. You look like a terrorist. It's like a terrorist, that's weird, I'm Jewish. Um, Bring down America. We fucking run this place. <laughs> That's what I said, and I stand by. Where are my Jews at? Come on, where are you at? All right, just me. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's what there. Uh, there used to be more. I don't know what happened. I'm not a history buff or anything, but I'm pretty sure at one point there were a few more. All right. <laughs> Well, let me say this. Uh, I am not that Jewish. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not. Well, okay, my last name's Leibovitz. I'll give it to you. That's pretty Jewish. But I'm telling you, like, if you looked at my bank account, you'd be like, oh, maybe not. You know, like, I'm not. Oh, we'll talk about something else. Um, I think terms of endearment are weird. Not the movie. Or images, I would say. You know what I mean? Like, the things that we say to our lovers. Like, you're picking up your girl. Ooh, you look good enough to eat. <laughs> and digest. <laughs> and shit out. <laughs> and smear on the walls. <laughs> you look so good, I want to paint a mural with your fecal remains. <laughs> people, people say this, people complain about the one that got away. I've been doing that all night. You've been complaining about the one that got away, or you've been talking during people's sets? Which have you been doing? I've been doing this all night. Well, I don't know. You were, I didn't know if you were talking to me. You were talking to someone else. You talking to me? I, I, well, I, was, talk, I was talking to you, because I, I thought you were talking to me. I probably was. But, but you, no, I think we've determined that you weren't. You just said, you said, I've been doing that all night, is what you said. And I was like, shit, what's he been doing all night? <laughs> Like, shit, girl, you just noticed I'm jacking off under the table. I would do that all night, girl. 
I thought you, I was talking about when people, you know people complain about the one that got away, right? I thought you were, I, I, and then you said, I've been, doing, I've been talking about that all night. Have you? He kind of was. A little bit, I was. He was. Man, are you I'm bummed out? I'm not bummed out. this <laughs> guy. He took your girl? all night and you're still sitting at the table with him? Whoop his fucking ass! So I took your girl. I'm sure these guys would be happy to help you out. This guy, you'll have to give him a few bucks. He'll just do it for the love. Though. I don't know. People say that though. The one that got away. That's creepy. Right? Yeah, one of them got away. What the fuck happened? You forgot to lock the dungeon? How did she get away? You gotta take precautions or they're gonna get away. I mean, you have to have a system and you gotta get... They try and get away from me, I tase them. That's what I do. That's just me. Yeah, I tase them with my neck, but that's just what I do. You gotta find your own... System. Uh, I don't know. I'm lucky I don't have to deal with it. I'm married. Anyone in here married? People married? Divorced. I love it. I love being married. Uh, we just for uh, for Valentine's Day, I got my wife a great gift. I got her a big glass dildo. <laughs> well, see, because I walked in on her a few weeks ago, pleasuring herself with my glass bowl, and I can't have that. You know what I mean? Like, right? I love the taste of my wife, and I love the taste of weed, but never the twenty. You know? It just gets confusing. My friends are like, Mike, why are you licking the pipe? <laughs> Sense memory. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Uh, I promise it gets much worse. <laughs> I do love being married. I can't believe somebody married me. <laughs> what a stupid bitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's great. But she puts up with all this crazy shit. I make her do all this crazy shit, and I don't know why she does it, because, like, she's an adult, and I am a child. <laughs> she doesn't have but, like, here's one thing I make my wife do. Like, if you, if, I mean, I guess many guys are married, but when you get married, try it. This one's really fun. This is something I do. So, like, whenever we come up with a household agreement, just something simple around the house, you get the groceries, I'll pick up the dry cleaning, right? To seal the deal, I make her shake my penis. It's a good time. But not only that, when she does it, see, she has to say, Pleasure doing business with you. That's a good time. And then your line is, The pleasure is all mine. You know, so you that. That's a good one. The only problem I have with being married is it's a kind of a problem with all women. And like I don't want to get off on the wrong foot here. Like I love all all of you guys so much. I love like women are I'm into you. I dig you. But it would be super awesome for us if just every once in a while you could uh, say what you mean. Like that would be so Awesome, right? Just occasionally, just occasionally, once in a while, like the thing that you want me to understand, if you could say the words that mean that, that would be a help. Because we don't always understand, because men are really literal creatures. We don't, like my wife is always saying this shit to me, and she thinks I understand, I don't understand. Like one thing she's always saying to me, she always tells me she wants me to talk dirty to her. So I want you to talk dirty to her. I want you to talk dirty to her. But I'm like, ooh, girl, I'm gonna take a dump in your own pussy. <laughs> I sleep on the couch. Say what you mean. We don't have the fucking Rosetta Stone. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Say what you mean. <laughs> so, uh, crazy winter we had this year, huh? Like, crazy winter, crazy weather. <laughs> We've been out. Okay, I walked one. I walked one. There she goes. She's like, well, I am not letting that man take a dump in my pussy. <laughs> you don't need to get uptight about it, all right? It's a simple turn in the pussy joke. It's not a big deal. All right. Did anyone miss the winter this year? Did you guys miss it? Did you miss it? I missed it. I missed it. I don't like the cold weather. What I like, this is what I like. I like shopping for cold weather accessories. I, I, just, I don't know, I, I get filled with this like giddy sense of anticipation. Right? When I come out of a store and I bought like a new pair of gloves or something. Or, or yeah, whatever. I'm just like, ooh boy. <laughs> Wonder where I'm gonna lose these. <laughs> the coffee shop and the bushes by the elementary school, where's it gonna be? <laughs> I hate the summer! Summer is the worst! Fuck the summer! And I don't want to offend you guys again, like if you like it, I get it. It's nice to be out when it's nice out. The problem is that other people think so too, so you have to deal with that, right? You got these fucking crowds everywhere. 
In Chicago, where I live, they set up these street festivals where they shut down your block. They got some has been band is headlining it. They got fucking street vendors set up. And you're coming home, you're like, I live here. What the fuck is? They're like, well, fuck you. It's party time. Okay, all right. I went to one last year. I went to Randolph Street Fest. If anyone ever has a chance to go to Randolph Street Fest this summer, don't go. It fucking sucks. It's the worst. I'll tell you. I'll give you the whole experience. This is what you get to do at Randolph Street Fest. You get to wait in line for an hour to buy tickets and let you wait in another line for an hour to buy beer. That's it. That's the best. That's all. It is. It's all thing. I just turned to my buddy. I was like, dude, this is too much wait. I got beer at the house. And the only lines there go up your fucking nose. <laughs> Oh, she's back. She's like, oh, he's talking about cocaine. Okay, well. yeah, fuck yeah. It's funny though that my buddy just turns to me. He's like, yeah, but do you have the spin doctors playing at your house? Like, no, that's the best part, dude. Let's fucking go. Nobody needs that. Why do you need them? You want them? I got thirty bucks in a bag of weed. I'm sure when you get them, you know? turn into a full blown tour for the boys. The worst thing for me about summer in Chicago though is you walk around the streets downtown and we got the clipboard people. Anyone ever run into the clipboard people? Oh, there's people! Young idealistic people, they want you to give them money for their cause, right? You got some stupid shirt that says save the children, fuck off, right? The dumb clipboard, they make you feel like a dick if you won't talk to them. Yes. Don't they? Yes. They totally do. I literally had one of them say to me, she goes, uh, she goes, excuse me, sir, do you have a minute to help end genital mutilation in Uganda? What the fuck, right? What are you, what are you supposed to say to that? She's like, sorry, my time's worth more than all the clitoris in Africa. Like, you can't say that. So you got to listen to them. you got to give them a minute, but that's not what they want, right? No, they want you to sponsor a child, $32 a month. Okay, that's a different story. I got my own kid I can't support. You know? <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, the poor girl's genitals. All right, I cut them and shit. It bounces. Now I'm a deadbeat sponsor. Oops. Uh, they're sending me these angry letters in the mail. Here's the part I don't understand. How can anyone be so mad at me for bouncing a check? Right? You're shocked I had insufficient funds? Okay, why do you think I wrote you a fucking check? <laughs> if I had the money, I would give it to you. All right? I wrote you a check because right now, baby, I ain't got it. But by the time you deposit, who knows? Yeah. I'm pretty sure my ship's coming in money. I know. I mean, I get it. You're not supposed to write bad checks, but you can literally, you can write something on a piece of paper that makes the landlord go away. How can you not do that, right? What's the problem? It bounces. There's all these fees. I owe you more money? Well, I'm going to sell them. I'm going to write you a check. Big deal. I've been trying to take better care of myself and join a gym. I know we got some people here worked out. Work out. Gym is weird. So the clientele of my gym, it says like 50% fit people, 50% fat people. But here's the funny thing, right? Over time, the fit people, you'll see the same faces a lot. The fat people, it's a fucking whole new crew every time. Anyway, that's what I've heard. I've only been there the once, so I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know for sure. This gym's a drag, so because they got all these rules you gotta follow. It's hard to keep track of it if you're not like a gym person. Re rack your weights, let others work in, fucking stay out of the women's locker room, all this bullshit. <laughs> My gym, they've even got this sign, it's on the inside of the bathroom, so it says, please do not flush anything but toilet paper down the toilet. You know? But I just feel like an idiot scooping all the turds out. <laughs> There's got to be a better way, that's all I'm saying. I don't know what it is, but it's out there, let's find it. This is fucking gross. <laughs> Especially for me, because I scoop turds with my dick. <laughs> that's right, girl, I got a poopy dick. What's that? <laughs> Stupid rules everywhere, man. It's not just the gym, man. Like, I recently learned my favorite new stupid rule. You guys know what it is? It's yeah. pretty stupid. So I recently got hired to do stand-up comedy at a strip club. Okay, because my career's on fire. That's the first thing you learn when you get hired to do stand-up at the strip club. Is no one's there to fucking see you. That is for sure. What's that? What? Oh, now he's listening. Alright, so he wasn't listening about the cocaine, but he loves pussy. We know that. We love it. He loves pussy, but he's sitting next to the dude who stole his pussy from him. You just trying to work your way back in? 
I want to do... You guys are going to have a three-way, and then she's going to film it? Is this what's going to happen? <laughs> People just come here to make their plans for fuckfests later. Is that... This is like the second group with the fuck festival plans. <laughs> Tune in at the one strip club. Strip club. Someone's got a great sex addiction. I love I love strip clubs. But I was there. I was working there, and I found this out. You probably know this because you're a creep and you've been to all of them. <laughs> they got this rule at strip clubs in Illinois, right? Where if the club is completely topless, they're not allowed to serve booze. But you bring it. You can bring your own. Right? Okay, so we know the creep is right. He was a decoy. There was a decoy. <laughs> Crazy, right? Because the rule is supposed to protect the dancers, but no one's rolling to the club with a case of Bush Light and a bottle of Jack. Like I'm here to behave. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm just gonna shotgun these beers, slam this whiskey, keep my hands to myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Did I forget to lock the dungeon? Gotta go. <laughs> I love strippers. Give it up for the girls who work in those clubs. Come on, let's hear it. Those are good girls. Those are good girls. They work hard! They work hard to make her dick hard! Those are good girls. I like those girls, man. That's the perfect. You know what I've been having a hard time with lately? It's the street hookers. They've been getting pushy. Have you guys noticed this? So fucking pushy, man. I don't know if it's the economy or what. They are getting pushy, man. I got propositioned by these two hookers the other night. And these are like real hookers, too. None of this Hollywood bullshit. You all know the difference, right? I know you know the difference. For the rest of you, I'll explain. Alright. Real hooker. She's never gonna look exactly like Elizabeth Shue in Leaving Las Vegas. I mean, she never quite looks like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. But she always looks a little bit more like, like, like Precious on Halloween. Or something. You know, it's just like, it's really kind of gross. Now look, I don't want to offend anybody. All right, I don't have anything against gross women. Okay, how could I? <laughs> I love all women. Pretty, ugly, fat, thing. If you're into this, I'm into you. <laughs> What's that? You like fat Jews with hair on their neck? <laughs> you're my type. <laughs> so if you're gross, if you are, and no one here is, because I can see you all, and you're all beautiful, but hypothetically, if you were, okay, and you wanted to prance around like you're sexy, I'd say, God bless you. I'd say, please hit on me at the bar. I'm flattered. I won't probably go home with you. <laughs> but I ain't paying for it. That's, uh... I think I mentioned I'm Jewish, right? Did I say that before? I'll pay you with my dick! That's it. That's all. Wouldn't that be fun if that were like a legitimate way to pay for something? Yeah. Thank you for coming to Best Buy. Will that be cash, credit, or your dick? <laughs> Do you even have to ask? <laughs> I promise not to come up short. <laughs> all right. Uh, I promise, but then I do anyway, because fuck her, right? All right. <laughs> about right they got all of it they got the fake nails they got the like the bad weed they got that comically small rubber mini skirt the one that looks like it goes around a bundle of asparagus you know I mean? <laughs> big girls too man mesh stocking stretched to the limit like they call it a whale in the tuna net you know, real whores just <sighs> very tempting <laughs> so these two they roll up in their honda civic right they uh they roll down the window and this is their pitch this is how pushy they're getting they just go uh, they just go hey baby where's the party yeah i'm like i don't know <laughs> They keep going, they're like, they're like, we'll get in a party with us. <laughs> like, no thanks, they don't really do like partying tonight. Yeah, I got other stuff to do, I'm gonna do homework. <laughs> <laughs> then they get real explicit. One of them goes, she goes, mm, you know, for $20, you can get that deal sucked. In case I don't already know what we're talking about. It's the most obvious thing. I feel like I was in the movie theater and the guy at the ticket box was like, hey man, you know, for 1050, you can see Transformers. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you're old, so I understand what the transaction is. Then, I won't bite, they get mean. Like, one of them goes, what are you, gay? Because that's the only reason I wouldn't want to party with them, right? Like, oh, you don't want to get in the car with the two most horrible things you've ever seen? <laughs> You want to get robbed? Possibly murdered? <laughs> Fucking homo! <laughs> the stupid man who was... I don't even know why they picked me, that's the thing, right? Like, I'm pretty self-aware. I don't think that I look like the kind of guy who 
who has $20. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> know your market, broads! You should be doing better. I do okay. I do fine. Don't worry about me. Because I do, I do the comedy thing. I'm also lucky enough, I should be happy. I'm lucky enough to have a really great... I walked another... I'm really, uh... <laughs> He's gotta go kill someone. Over there. <laughs> oh shit, this is a little show right now. Gotta do that hit. <laughs> no, but I do okay. Because I do the, the stand-up thing. I'm also, I am lucky enough to have a, a, really, a really great day job. I'm an office temp. <laughs> It's the only job you can have where you're expected to be incompetent, so that's cool. Every time the agency calls, I'm like, oh, I wonder what they want me to fuck up today. <laughs> they haven't called in a while. <laughs> Used to be an artist. Some uh, well-known sandwich franchise. I shouldn't tell you guys which one, but I will say it was Quiznos. <laughs> I don't know about you, I feel like you're going to pay me less than a living wage, that's fine. I took the job, right? But I'm going to make sure you're only getting what you pay for. Fair is fair, right? So this job, the boss was always on my case to shave before work. I was like, alright, I know you're trying to run a business, but that's not the kind of job this is, right? Like, I mean, I'm making $7 an hour. But you just made me shift leader because I'm not on parole. You know, so like, let's, let's loosen it up a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to shave my face, but I will show up baked and give my friends free shit. How about that? that <laughs> that's more the kind of job. I should be doing better. I don't know why I'm not. Because I went to college. And I learned a lot. I, I did. I learned a lot in college. I learned so much. For instance, I, I don't know if you guys know this. Do you know this? Do you know uh, you can sniff a whole eight ball in one night without dying? Did you know that? I learned that, I learned that in college. It's like, hey, mom, you'll never believe what I'm learning. <laughs> Yes, send more money. <laughs> like a lot more. <laughs> Seriously, these guys are about to break my kneecaps. A lot more money. I was not a good student in college, but it kind of fit in at my school. Like, this story will illustrate what I'm talking about. The first assignment that I ever had in college was my first semester of freshman year, right? Obviously. That'd be weird if they didn't give you an assignment until junior year. That'd be crazy. They'd be like, we just trust you. <laughs> so first semester of freshman year, my first assignment, I have to give this presentation in a 10 a.m. English class with my partner, right? 10 a.m. English class presentation of my work. That's my first assignment all time. So this is the kind of student I am. I'm in my dorm room 9 p.m. the night before. And I'm like, shit, man, I'm hungry, but the dining hall just closed. Fuck. Ugh, guess I'll eat some acid. <laughs> questionable call, right? Fucking questionable call. You're going to be up all night, you're not going to be rested for that class, you know, but then, this is what happens, right? Twelve hours later, you try and talk yourself down, you're like, alright, that wasn't very smart, but it's okay, it's fine, I'm not really tripping anymore, I'm not really tripping anymore, it's fine, it'll be fine. <laughs> thing is, you go to class, you sit down, you very quickly realize, oh, but I'm not exactly not tripping anymore either, okay? This should be fun. So I'm giving the presentation, right? I feel like I'm doing a great job. <laughs> so... Hey, for some reason, every time I look over at my partner, he's looking back at me like I'm fucking insane. <laughs> so I feel terrible. I go up to him after class. I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry about that back there. I don't know what to... <laughs> I dropped acid last night. <laughs> but this is the kind of school that I went to. See, he just looks right back at me and he goes, oh, all right, thanks for telling me. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I dropped right before class. <laughs> And then he scuttled away on all fours. It was pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Who here's done acid by applause? Woo! Sweet, awesome, I'm a cop. Get in the van. I'm, can, I am a pervert though, please get in my van. Get in my van. Why won't more people get in my van? I don't understand. I've got this van. I pull it up, you know, by the park. I'm like, come on, get in. And everyone's like, no, we need bikes. No, I got candy in there, we got DVD players. It's like, yes, I'll fuck you, but I don't know why you need to focus on that. Everyone's so focused on, you're gonna fuck me. Yes, I will, but it's still a good time. Just get in the van. Just get in the van! Alright. I'm not convincing anyone, I can see that. I'll have to try a new tactic. I do love acid, though. We got some acid in the van? No. No one wants to get in my van. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I do love acid. acid. That's the only thing I've ever taken that'll straight up make you forget how to read. <laughs> they give me 
too drunk to read the room start spinning or whatever, but man, you pick up like a, like a piece of mail on acid, you feel like an anthropologist from another planet. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Strange markings. <laughs> Next time you're like, dude, that's your fucking name and address. Ah, <laughs> uh, the strangest markings of all. <laughs> I can't party like that anymore though, because I got a. Yeah, 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 I'm rapping. I'm gonna rap. Fuck it. I'm like, yeah, no one's getting in my van. I don't want to rap. I gotta, I gotta be a little more. You know, I gotta get, be a better role model because I'm a parent. Yeah. That'll happen. Uh, anyone here got kids? Thank you very much. People here got kids? Good for you, clap it up, be proud. Like, right on, we all make mistakes, good for you. <laughs> we do, my mistake just turned nine, okay? <laughs> oh, come on, I'm kidding, Jesus, I don't know how old he is. <laughs> he's cute though, he is cute, whatever he is, he's still at that age where he's, he's losing his teeth, you know? Because he won't fucking listen. <laughs> That's a joke, too. That is a joke. I know. You gotta discipline your kids, right? But for some reason, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to hit them when you're white. <laughs> you gotta figure out a different way to keep them in line. I keep them in line with my dick, but that's just me. The kid is bad, though. The kid is fucking really bad. I don't know why my kid's so why is my kid so bad? Yeah, what's wrong with my kid? I don't know what his problem is. I just had to have that meeting. You ever had this? How old are your kids? Okay. Five. Okay. So I don't know if you've had I just had to have that meeting with this school counselor where they're like, uh, maybe it's time to start thinking about putting Isaac on medication. And they make it feel like it's this friendly conversation, but there's all these people in the room. There's a counselor, there's a teacher, the principal, a psychologist. I think there's a cop in there. There's like all these fucking people in there. And I had these two simultaneous reactions. On the one hand, I was just like, fuck you. <laughs> right? No, seriously, do your job. Pay a little extra attention to him. He's a little kid. He doesn't need to be on psychiatric medication. But then there was this other voice in my head at the same time that was like, no, Mike, you got to put the kid on Riddle. <laughs> because then you can steal it. And that is good shit. <laughs> that is good shit. It would be so easy to... It would be so easy he's nine or something. It would be so easy to take... They say that. It's an expression, right? It's like taking speed from a baby. They say that. <laughs> meeting where they're like, we don't know why, it doesn't seem to be helping. You know, I'm like, oh, that's weird, you should see, I just alphabetized my whole t-shirt collection. You know? <laughs> Better up the dosage. You know? <laughs> but uh, I think the hardest part about having kids, yeah. hey, this is my big closer, shh, <laughs> be quiet for my, oh, you're ordering drinks, sorry. Oh, Thank you for your, uh, for your waitress, by the way. Really <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. I just want to. I like to end. Uh, it's, it's a lot of me up here being like, "Hey, I'm a stupid, drunk, fat dude." But like, I like to end on something a little more sincere. Um, really good. The hardest part about having kids is when they start talking. Because sometimes they say the most hurtful thing you could, they could possibly think of. <laughs> like my son said this to me today. He goes. I hate you, Dad. Now that's rough. Now, and I knew, I knew why he thought that was the worst thing that he could say. But you guys who have kids, you know, you hear that, you're just going like, okay. <laughs> you couldn't possibly hate me as much as I hate you. <laughs> I mean, I just said no TV. You ruined my life. So I think we go ahead and call that even. But I, this is this is the truth, and then I'll get out of here. Having kids is the biggest responsibility you can have, right? You gotta teach them about the world, you gotta teach them right from wrong, but just as important, you gotta learn from them, too. Because kids are great teachers, they teach you a lot about yourself. Because they do things you wouldn't expect, right? Like my kid did something I didn't expect just the other day, he peed on Which, oh, you think that's fun? I didn't think that was fun. He thought it was fucking hilarious, okay? Now, this is what I learned. Have you ever been so mad? You just don't know what to do. <laughs> this is what I learned about myself. First thing my brain snapped to was, give him a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Daddy's got more ammo. Because <laughs> Daddy's been drinking. <laughs> hey, you guys have been great. Thanks a lot, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen.
Did you guys enjoy yourself? Yeah. And what about Mike Leibovitz was like, fuck the mic. I don't need the fucking mic. Like, he just stepped into the side. I forgot to do some uh, announcements earlier, so I'll do that right now, and then we're gonna fucking dismiss. March 17th, you know what the fuck that is? Really? Uh, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Come to Zodiac on St. Patrick's Day. It's gonna be crazy as shit. I live right upstairs, so I'll be down here. Fuck it out. Uh, uh, you'll be up there? Easy. Like, easy. Come on, I'm gonna get rid of my automates. Okay. Uh, and also, March 29th, uh, we have an acoustic uh, set going on, Ninja Acoustic. It's supposed to be the shit from what I hear. And next show, April 5th. Uh, it's the first show that I'm headlining myself. So, please come out. It's going to be craziness, it's going to be PBR just skeeting everywhere, like we don't give a shit, like whatever, and uh, yeah, definitely come out for that, local hero, Keith Evans. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is our comedy show, did you enjoy all the comedians? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a good night, drink some more, fucking smoke some more, poop some more, I don't give a shit, bye. On the street, strangers stopping me, they want to tell me what they think I look like. And I get all this different stuff. I get all different kinds of things. Like, they can't reach out like the 70s porn star, but they like, I get 70s cop, I get 70s drug dealer. It's a really broad fucking. <laughs> They're clear on the decade. Like, that's what I have. I actually ran into a friend of mine I hadn't seen in a long time, and he goes, uh, Hey man, don't take this the wrong way, but every time I see you, you look more and more like the entire cast of Taxi. <laughs> We're not taking this on bad on the funny show. And then people always tell me I gotta look. Hey man, you gotta look. You should be on TV. I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Oh, I should just be on TV. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Why, why am I getting high with you in the basement when I could just be on TV? <laughs> My one buddy, he goes, he goes, uh, man, you should play every stoner slacker in every pizza commercial ever, man. I was like, all right, I'm down. Why don't you tell my agent, right? <laughs> my agent, that's what I named my bong. Uh, it's a pretty sweet arrangement. I give him 10% of everything I make, and uh, he blows smoke up my ass. So that's, uh, I don't know how you guys are taking bong hits, but you got to fucking... You gotta... If you ain't taking anal rips, you ain't been high. <laughs> People are weird, man. People are so weird. I feel like I'm not gonna lie. I headline a lot of bar. They got a different word for it. They call it refusing to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, sir, you gotta get out of here. I'm like, but I'm headlining. Like, no, we're gonna call the cops. <laughs> Punk ass feature in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, give it up for everyone you've seen so far. This is pretty great show. You look like the dude from the Desperado. Yeah. That's pretty awesome that you were telling someone else that they look like a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they do both look like murderers, but like very different kinds of murderers. Like, if you need a hit done, you call this guy, right? <laughs> this guy's just like fucking eating the bodies like, I'm trying to make the voices stop. Make the voices stop. <laughs> Serial killer. <laughs> cereal eats a lot of cereal. All right, come on, get out of here. Fuck, you got some lucky charm, so fuck you, kill it. All right, okay. <laughs> so you guys probably heard I had some jokes. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I know, no, I like the audience to be terrified. <laughs> I just want you to be afraid of, of me. Um, this is cool. You guys are cool. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Give up again for No More Tower, ladies and gentlemen. Ghetto Zoopily Zoo, that's what I am. <laughs> Wait, but I worked on that for like two minutes. Like, I was in the back like, oh, I'm going to say this shit. I'm going to say this shit. And then I was like, careful with my life and shit. I was like, okay, we're cool about I'm going to say it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? 
turn myself off. That's why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your next comedian, your headliner? Put your hands in there. Make some more noise for your next comedian, your headliner. Please. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Chicago, again, eight, nine, ten, eight faces. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Leibovitz. Oh, yeah. Are you guys ready? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you guys, I headline a lot of bars. Okay. All right. I get that one sometimes. I get that one sometimes. I do. I, I, I get actually. I get people coming up to me telling me what they think I look like all the time, which is pretty weird because I, I didn't fucking ask. Do you know what I mean? I didn't ask. But I get it all the time. So I get that one. I got that one. Hey, you know what? I get different shit. I'm never sure. What impression I give off when I come up here? I think it's a generational thing, okay? So I think like people my own age, they'll take a look at me coming up on stage, and I can tell they're looking at me, they're just like, all right. I guess we're going to see Wari on our stand-up comedy. We'll see how that goes. He's still going to win, I guess. How much is this free show? Okay, all right, cool. But then the older crowds, see, the older crowds are a little bit different. The older crowds have a different approach. Like, I was doing this show... Last week at a fucking, what do you call it? Not a retirement home, but a, at the, um, a casino. I'm sorry, I was getting this. <laughs> so they're a little older, right? So so they see, see me up here, they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, check out the 70s porn star. You know, it's fucking, it was cool. After the show, actually, one of these, one of these cougars. <laughs> She came up to me, she said I looked like Ron Jeremy, right? She took me back to her place. Let me tell you guys, haha, she was disappointed. <laughs> I felt like I won that one, you know? With the dick! That's, that's how I like to win things. That's the victory stick! Okay. Uh, I don't know, you know what I feel like everyone, like, they're all, everyone's all up in their own head, they got all this stuff going on. Everyone thinks everyone else is out to get them. Uh, you know what I mean? Right? Like, here's a perfect example. I'm, I'm in the coffee shop earlier today, right? I'm standing by the door, not looking creepy at all, right? And, uh, and so this young lady comes into the bar, or to the, to the coffee shop, and she's taking off her coat, and as she takes her coat off, a button pops off, and it falls on the floor. Right? So I bend down, and I grab it. As I'm standing back up, this woman says to me, she goes, uh, excuse me, can I have that back? Right? Like, I want to know what she thinks I'm doing, right? She think I'm just gonna be like, oh, finders keepers. <laughs> Sorry, this one's going in the collection. <laughs> well, like she was looking at me like I've been standing there all day, just fucking waiting, right? like a pervert with a button fetish. Right? She's like, oh, finally, and that's from a pink coat. <sighs> it was stupid. It was that moment today. I knew it. Chivalry is dead. So what I did, I took the button, I put it in my mouth, and I swallowed it, and I fucking ran away. <laughs> now I have a tummy ache, but that's alright, because I'm going to poop buttons later. Well, uh... <laughs> yeah, girl, I like to poop buttons. What's up, girl? Get some, get some buttons.